Shalom and bless you brothers and sisters. Uh, we the brothers from the gathering of Christ Church. I would like to thank you for all your positive uh, responses. And uh, we're here to touch on a very controversial topic today. Uh, the topic is the uh, doctrine called the rapture. Okay. Uh, we posted a few videos a couple of months ago uh, saying that the rapture is a lie. And uh, through that, because so many people believe what the rapture is, we received some good mail, some bad mail, and some confusing mail on those that are, whom are con uh, confused uh, because you don't understand how we can say that the rapture is a lie according to the doctrine that's being taught today. If it be the Lord's will, with this teaching today, you will understand the origin of the doctrine of the rapture, uh, why the Christian churches, especially the Western world, is teaching this doctrine today, and the purpose behind the religious institutions along with the government the purpose they want the purpose they want you to believe that there's a rapture all right now before we go into the holy bible i'm going to use the holy bible today the king james version all right we will also use the apocrypha okay the apocrypha all right. Now, unless you have this information, the Apocrypha with the Bible, you do not have the complete compilation of the King James Version. The Apocrypha was a part of the original 1611 King James. Now, before we go into the full understanding of the teaching of uh, the rapture or the left behind doctrine that we see today in the Christian church. We're going to start by asking some young brothers their personal opinion. Uh, these brothers have mentioned that they have went to church fairly new, just came into the fold. And we wanted to ask them their personal understanding of what they was taught about the rapture and, you know, get their insight based on their personal experiences in the church. We're going to start with the brother here. What's your name, brother? Michael. Brother Michael, Michael Allah. Michael, can you please explain out of your own words what have you ever learned? You went to church before, right? Yes. Uh, what have you learned about the rapture or left behind? When the church, they told me like the rapture is like when, when Jesus come back to, to, to save all these people to save all the chosen ones up. To save all the people up. And right, to save all the people up. That's going to be the wretched right there. But the ones who are left behind, it's, it's going to want to be ones who feel the wrath of God. So you're saying that you've been taught that the rapture would be people are collected off of the earth. Yeah, people collected off Christ the come and grab the people off of the earth, right? Yeah. And... Those that are left behind will go through what? The wrath of God. The wrath of God. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's your name, brother? My name is uh, Brandon. Okay. What have you learned, or the teachings you've learned? You went to church, right? Yeah. Christian church? Yeah. You heard about the rapture and the Antichrist and all that? Yeah. What is your understanding on what they've been teaching you? Yeah, basically, basically that it's just add on to what we were just saying about how God would collect all of his people up into heaven and Everybody who's left behind will have to go through a rapture and the Lord will send storms and everything to the to the earth. And okay. And they also say, you know, if you don't mind, just think about the Antichrist. You ever hear about this Antichrist? Yeah. Okay, what do they tell you about the Antichrist? Basically, the, the Antichrist is somebody will come that will come after the people that, uh, after God's elect will be ro rose up into heaven. Okay. Thank you. What's your name, brother? My name is Harrison. Okay, and what is your understanding? You've been to church, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, you know, give me your understanding on the rapture and the left behind, what you've been taught. Uh, 
uh, I've been taught, um, like basically the same from these two. Like the chosen ones will be um, led into the kingdom, and the um, ones who's left here will, um, will be, we get the wrath of God. Basically. Okay. Have any of you seen the Left Behind videos? I know it's time to move. Uh, you ever heard about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's some videos that be shown on movies sometimes, like, like when, 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 like it be showing all, it be showing the graves opening up and all that stuff like that, and the, the dead coming like, they raised up in the sky and all that, and that's when God just come and destroy everything on earth. We, we, we don't destroy anything, destroy, destroy by earth that's still on the ground and everything. Okay. Also, I don't know if you've uh, recognized some of the teachings of the doctrine of, of uh, the Left Behind doctrine. They're teaching that that the Antichrist will introduce a chip or a mark of the beast. And that the people that are raptured into heaven, they don't have to worry about that or fear this because they'll be separated into heaven while this chip is being introduced by an antichrist that is not revealed yet. Okay, have you ever heard about that? Yeah. So the church will be raptured, right? The church will be raptured, and because the church is raptured, they don't have to go through the tribulation or the pain that's coming here. So if you are a Christian that believes in God and Christ and you are devout, they're teaching you that you don't have to fear at all because Christ is going to come and move you somewhere before the pain come to the earth. Is that what you understand? Yeah. That's what you understand? Okay. That's what I understood too. I went to church. I was raised in church. So have this, this brother was raised in church. But we've never questioned where that doctrine comes from. So we're going to use the scriptures that are taught in mainstream Christianity today. Now, this doctrine of left behind, so you brothers will know, all right? It started with, and I have a picture of him here. It started in the early 1800s by this guy here, whose name is J.N. Darby. I want you to see a picture of him. He's the founder of dispensationalist doctrine. All right? And I, okay, y'all see this? Yeah. All right? Before this guy was born in the early 1800s, no one knew about a left behind doctrine. Okay, and don't forget, Christ was here over two, about 2,000 years ago. And this teaching of left behind was not taught anywhere in the world, even in the old world. Before this guy came up with that in the 1800s, okay? The 1800s. In the new world, he came here to America and came up with this dispensation, new doctrine, you know, that the people before him was, were not teaching. Even the Catholic Church itself was not teaching this doctrine. And I want to show people out there a picture of this guy. Okay. J. N. Darby. You got it? Okay. Caucasian. Now, and I know some people would ask or say, why am I mentioning mentioning his his ethnic his, his, his ethnic background? Whether or not he's Caucasian or, you know, or black or why am I mentioning the fact that he's Caucasian? The reason I'm mentioning this is because the doctrine we see that we learn today here in America in the Western world primarily came from Caucasians. All right, and that's why we sh that's the reason we show the origin. Let me put this here. That's why we show the origin of the people that came up with certain ideas. It's important we know that. Okay? And it's amazing while this new founded doctrine was being pushed in the earth, right? What was going on with the people 
in America during that time, the early 1800s? Anybody? Slavery. Huh? Slavery. What? Slavery. What? Slavery. 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 History. Slavery. So the same time the earth was being subdued by the Western world, and the Western world ideologies were being pushed all through the earth, they were also coming up with new ideas when it comes to the doctrine of Christ. All right? Now, we're going to show you what, what most or all of Christians believed before J.N. Darby, and we're going to show you what was introduced after that. Okay? Primarily, the conservative Protestants today are the bearers or holders of this doctrine. All right? The Protestants broke off from the Roman Catholic Church, but still, they're still one even though they make everybody, everyone think that they're separate, okay? It was still a Western doctrine coming from the Western world to subdue the earth. So during that very dark period for slaves, okay, they were pushing an ideology that would eventually seep into the children whom would one day be left free or set free. Alright? Now, let me show you on this chart here, if you don't mind. Alright? And we're going to prove everything we're saying here. You had Christ, who was crucified, right? At the age of 33. Alright? Before J. N. Darby, it was known that after crisis crucifixion that Satan would come and attack the woman that bare the man child in Revelation the 12th chapter. So the spirit that was in Rome or the Romans would come down on God's people which was, which was called the tribulation period. A lot of things happened after Christ was crucified. The disciples were martyred. Jews, the Jews last stand happened. That was tribulation. That was pain. That was suffering that came on God's people. So, before J. N. Darby, it was understood that the tribulation period would happen to God's people until he come back. That God people, God's people, Israel, would be punished until the second coming, until Christ lead them out of their tribulation. Alright? Now, J.N. Darby came up with another idea. His idea was instead of it being a tribulation period between Christ and the second coming, which everyone, uh, all, the, all the, his, the historians, the biblical scholars, understand that God's people were scattered throughout the earth, went through much pain and suffering right after Christ. This guy came up with dispensationalism to tell you that you have to break this period from Christ and his coming into dispensation periods. Okay? He was teaching, or they started to believe, that after Christ was crucified, right, then there will be a rapture at a certain period. Right? Christ would come back, rapture up what they call today the church. This is what they teach now. And those that are saved with this rapture, meeting Christ in the air, will not deal with the pain and suffering and the mark of the beast that will be introduced by the Antichrist. Right? And when the Antichrist come on the scene, he will do all these miracles and evil works, and for seven years, during this tribulation period, he will introduce a spending system or a chip that if anyone get this, will be tormented. And then after that, Christ will give peace for a thousand years for those that rejected the mark. You understand? 
and those that followed him. That's, he put a dispensation in. When really, before J.N. Darby came on the scene, before J.N. Darby, right? Before J.N. Darby, it was commonly known that there was no dispensation. That Christ was crucified, his people would go through tribulation, and then after that, the second coming. Right? So, why would they try to put dispensations in between this tribulation period? We're going to show you today. Alright? Right. Now, this wasn't good enough. This was not good enough. Now, they, plant, they planted the dispensation seed, or the left behind seed, in the 1800s. But they continued it through doctrine. And mind you, in the beginning, that same doctrine that they were pushing, that J. N. Darby was pushing, was actually rejected by the Catholic Church at one time. They, they were rejecting it, calling it a heresy teaching. Because it was commonly known that the tribulation would happen to God's people until the second coming. Now, I'm going to show you how they tricked the people into believing this. The tribulation happened to God's people in 70 AD, which are the children of Israel. So the church, or the modern day Christian church, which came over here from Europe, switched it into making you think that the tribulation is not on the children of Israel, but that tribulation is on the church. So they did a play of words. So now, instead of you identifying who the tribulation is actually happening to, you understand? Yes. People are not even looking at the people that are going through tribulation. Now they attribute Israel to the church. That happened over here. That's new doctrine. So that wasn't enough. So they had to use a form of propaganda. Because the Bible itself could not back up the teaching of left behind and could not back up the teaching of dispensationalism as well as they wanted it to. Because any learned man can see, can clearly see, any learned man or woman could see that there's holes in that doctrine. So what they did, they got all the pastors together, all the known evangelists, which have political status in this earth. They did this in the mid-80s, between the mid-80s and the mid-90s. And they started pushing a left-behind doctrine. I don't know everybody know about this. Left-behind. So this was a form of propaganda. And see, what most people don't understand or don't try to fathom is that even the authors of the left-behind books will tell you that this was fiction. It's their interpretation of the teachings of J.N. Darby and dispensationalism. So, to relieve the preachers who could not really back up this doctrine, they helped them by propaganda and coming up with movie productions so that they can give their congregation to believe what they're see what they're seeing. So through movies and propaganda they would push a fear of an antichrist and the church being raptured. Who were the guys that were behind the left behind teachings? Let's show you a picture of them. Here they are. Left behind authors, Dr. Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. See them? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm going to get them on the screen here. You got it? 
Okay, now, can someone tell me what do Dr. Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and J.N. Darby, what are the similarities between them and J.N. Darby? Can y'all tell me? They're all Caucasian. Huh? They're all Caucasian. Say it louder. They're all Caucasian. They're all Caucasian. So, this tells me that the Europeans that came over here are the authority on doctrine when it comes to believing the Bible. So, because we respect them as the authority, we don't question whether or not there's an agenda with the doctrine. They'll give us books, they'll give us movies, they'll give us doctrine, and we will never question those things. Right? Because we think that they're telling us the truth. But when we go into this Bible today, beyond any shadow of a doubt, you'll know who's telling the truth or who's been lying to the people for ages and generations. And we're going to find out that according to the Bible, whether or not these people that we see here were even authorized to give you a doctrine. Okay? Our pastors and our preachers up in our neighborhoods will take this information like it's the gospel without researching. Because why? They're not reading the Bible themselves. You notice when you go into these bookstores, all, you have all these authors with different books about God. That's how they learn what to teach their congregation. It's like a corporate way of learning, understanding, and repeating or mocking like parrots what's being taught to you. So, we're going to go in, and I'm looking at these guys, and I'm saying, who made these guys the authority? Did God say that we should follow what they would give us? Did God say this? Is their doctrine correct? Let's see. Let's see the truth on dispensationalism, the rapture, and left behind. Another thing, before we go into the Bible here. Is the word rapture written up in the Bible? I'm going to ask you. Nope. Have y'all ever read the word rapture before? Not at all. See, these are key words to, to have you understand a doctrine that's being pushed. Like they have key words for Christianity. That will make you follow doctrine. Like for instance. The doctrine. Of the immaculate conception. You know immaculate conception is not written up in the Bible. But if somebody say immaculate conception. Boom. You got a key word to understand what they are trying to teach you. Right. Or the trinity. Right. Everyone know what the trinity is. Even if you don't never read the Bible. You will understand the doctrine of the Trinity. Key words that will make you understand philosophy. Rapture. Automatically, everyone know what it is. Why? It's perfect programming. Keynote words that will stimulate your senses to understand what they've been programming you. Okay? Let's get Colossians 2 and 8 first. Colossians 2 and 8. <clears throat> Read that. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Read that again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. See, Paul even warned us in the Bible. Christ warned us. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. That means instead of you learning the Bible and finding out whether or not something is true for yourself, you, you're being programmed 
through a man philosophizing. Now the Greeks were known for philosophizing. They were known as philosophers. The Lord says, we have to beware lest any man spoil you, make you no good to the Most High. Through philosophy. You can't philosophize this Bible. This Bible was not meant to be philosophized. It's a mystery that can be broken down by the elect. All right, read. Through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. You notice, through the modern day Christianity we see today, they teach you how to follow traditions. Easter, uh, Christmas, these are all traditions. Good Friday. So we have to beware, lest anyone, any man spoil us. We have, we have to watch men. Like the Left Behind guys and the J.N. Darby's. What was their agenda? Let's see. Read. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. What's rudiments of the world? I wonder how much money they made from Left Behind. Huh? I wonder how much money these guys left made from this TV production. The rudiments of the world. So there was an agenda behind this. Not only, not only to make people follow this doctrine, but to also get paid by bringing a new idea that our people did not understand in the old world. Read on. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And not after Christ. The only way I would believe in a rapture is if Christ told me there would be a rapture. See, now a man can't deceive me. Now I know there'll be a gathering, but will that gathering be the way they're teaching in this Western world? We're going to find out. All right? We're going to find out. Who else warned us from men? All right? Let's get Matthew, the 24th chapter. Let's see if our Lord and Savior warned us about men. Read that. Matthew 24 and 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed to what? Take heed that no man deceive you. We have to watch. We, we really need to watch these men. And that's including the men that's on these pulpits. Just because they're in, they're good orators, and they're in a place of power, that doesn't mean they're sent by God. Read that again. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. What verse you at? Chapter and verse. Matthew 24, verse 5. 20, 24, verse 5. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. What is that telling you? Christ is telling you that the greatest deception is going to happen by those that are using his name. You really have to understand that. If you want to know where the spirit of Antichrist is, would come from, it would come from those who professing to know Christ. And shall do what? And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. Okay? So in order, in order for me to get connected with my Lord and Savior, and to get, get connected to my true understanding according to the Bible as far as where I come from, if I'm going to connect to the Father, First, I have to understand, I'm not going to follow man. I will not listen to what they're telling me I should follow. I'm going to go into the Bible and try that man to see if what he's saying is of God. <laughs> and then if I can read out of the Bible what he's teaching to be correct, then I can respect what he's saying. I don't need, I, you know, personally, I don't need no movie to convince me about something. If, why would they go through through these elaborate productions, almost magic and acting, to convince you about the Most High? Because they understand this society have a very low attention span. And people have gone away from reading the Bible. So what they do, they package the Bible for you to deceive you. Alright? Now, 
we're going to go into the scriptures that they use to say that there will be a rapture. Here's the first scripture that they will go to. And when I say they, the Christian dogma. And I'm not going to say all Christians because there are some people that believe in Christ that follow this book. But they're very minimal. There's not too many. It's very, there's only a very few people in Christianity that actually follow the Bible. Let's go to Thessalonians. This is mine here. Let's go to Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. Right. Let's start there. First Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Them which are asleep. Those, those are the, uh, the people that died in Christ. So these that are asleep are waiting in the bosom of Abraham until their change. Read. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So those that sleep, if they're in Jesus, when Christ comes back, he will bring them with him. So when he says he will bring them with him, it's talking about him, Christ, coming to the earth to judge. Right? It's talking about actually him coming here. So he's going to bring those that died like the disciples, the 120 that followed the disciples, those that died in between that tribulation period upholding the truth of Christ. He say, listen, don't weep for them because they're coming back with Christ. Right? Read. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. So if we're here when Christ is coming, we're not going to stop them from coming. That's what it's saying. So where are they coming to? I'm going to ask y'all, where are they coming? To the where? Where is Christ coming to? He's coming to the earth with them. And we're not going to be able to prevent them. That means they're going to be changed first. Read. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With a shout. Read. With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ will leave the bosom of Abraham, change their form, and become a part of Christ's army. Read. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So what, what will happen? If we are following Christ, we will be changed. And we're going to show you a little later why that change is necessary. To meet Christ in the air to come back. Right? Read on. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, what, what, what we're learning in Christianity is that this is the scripture that's saying that Christ is going to come and rapture the church in the heaven. And we're just going to be with them. And that the Antichrist will be revealed. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Not only those that are in here, but those that are reading or looking at this video here. Did this scripture say anything about an Antichrist? Did y'all hear anything about an antichrist in these scriptures? No. Huh? No. Did, did this scripture say that a church was going to get raptured? No. No. It's telling you the dead in Christ and those that remain in Christ shall be caught up with them in the air. Right? But what are they being caught up to do? Let's see. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And 49. What are they being caught up to do? Right? We 1 Corinthians 15, 49 down to 54. 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Okay. So we have these earthy shells, but when Christ comes back, we will bear the what? The heavenly bodies. Read. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. Neither doth corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And you see, he said, I show you a mystery. So because we know this is a mystery, everyone will not be will, will not understand this. So they take certain scriptures which they know is a mystery to deceive the people. Read. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. It says we shall not all sleep because why? You're going to have the dead in Christ and those that, that are here when Christ comes. So even though, even though it says here, we shall, not, we shall not all be asleep, like it says in Thessalonians, but we shall all be changed. The, 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 the brothers and sisters that died in Christ, that, that was raised from the dead, and those that remain, that were here. We are all going to be changed. We're going to show you why that change is necessary. Read. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Go ahead. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Immortality. So this change, when Christ comes back, is to make those that followed him immortal. Now, question. And this is crystal clear. This is a rhetorical question. You mean to tell me he's changing their bodies so that they can go be put up into heaven somewhere? When really, he's changing, he's changing those that followed him for a purpose. Okay? He's not changing them to be put up in heaven somewhere. It's going to show you why he's changing them. Read. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. So, did this scripture just say that he's going to rapture them up to be in heaven? No. they telling you that through doctrine. So let's examine when Christ comes back, what he will do. Okay, let's get Matthew 24. Start at the 39th verse, down to the 43rd verse. More scriptures uh, that the Christian church used to try to say that this is the uh, left behind or rapture doctrine. Read. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, the coming of the Son of Man be. Like when Christ come, it will be just like the days of Noah. No one perceived that, that the destruction was going to come during Noah's time. Until it rained, rained, and rained. People were still operating, doing what they wanted to do. So shall it be when Christ come back. Read. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. They use that to say, left behind. But we're going to show you that this is, a, this is a, an entirely different period. Okay? This is when the people will be gathered to the wilderness, and we'll prove that. Okay? You're going to have the gathering to the wilderness, then you're going to have the second coming of Christ. The gathering of the wilderness comes first. Okay? God's people will be in the wilderness for a period, then all the nations will try to destroy God's people while they're there, and then Christ will come back, and then the change will happen. See, they bunched all that together, to bring forth a left behind doctrine. How do we know that? Hold it and get Ezekiel 20 and 33. Ezekiel 20 and 33. <clears throat> Read. Ezekiel 20 and 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. So while the Lord is allowing disasters and destruction to go down in this earth, 
He's preparing a way to start freeing his people to guide them back to the land. Read. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. Gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. So the angels will move certain people to the wilderness. Similar to how he did Lot and Lot's family when they was taken too long in Sodom and Gomorrah. They was taken too long and the angels warned him that he's going to rain fire. So the angels moved Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the fire and the brimstone came down. Okay? That's how some of our people will be moved. But what people? Is this the church? Let's see. Read. With a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Go ahead. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. The wilderness of the people. So God's people will be gathered out of these different countries back to the same wilderness they were in. When they came out of ancient Egypt. So this gathering is not the gathering of the church. This is the gathering of God's people that have went through the tribulation. Read. And there will I plead with you face to face. So the Most High will plead with Israel face to face. There will be again under the rod, under the law. Read. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. Now who, what people did he plead with in Egypt? I mean coming out of Egypt. Those were Israelites. So now you have Christian Darber to try to say everywhere it says Israel, we're just going to inject the church. No, it's talking about his physical people that were scattered throughout the earth. That's the gathering. They're being gathered back. Not in the sky. They're going back to the same wilderness. Then what will happen? Read. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. The rod is the law. You will bring Israel again into the bind of the covenant. Read. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. So the rebels, you will have people of Israel that are actually protected, that was moved into the wilderness, that will rebel against the Most High again. The same way they rebelled in the Old Testament. Read. And them that transgress against me. Go ahead. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourned, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. So those of God's people that make it through this will go into Israel when Christ come back. The rebels will be purged. So again, nowhere is there evidence that people are being taken up into heaven for refuge until an antichrist or boogeyman show up. Okay? We're showing you the scriptures to let you know that when people are moved, when two in the field and he shall take one, they're going to be moved into a place within the earth, according to the Bible. Another scripture they use to bring forth, to try to use, uh, push the doctrine of the rapture. Okay? Let's get Luke 17 and 34. Luke 17 and 34. Luke 17 and 34. Read. I tell you, in that night there should be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. You see that? The same thing. Christ, uh, the angels are going to come and reap. And when he reap, some will be left to be destroyed. Others will be moved to the wilderness. Talking about the gathering of God's people. And we say gathering... Because the word gathering is in the scriptures. We're going to show you. The word rapture is not in the scriptures. It's the gathering of the elect of God's people. Read. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. There will be some people at work working together. Then they'll look up and one person will be gone. Okay. Who will take that one person? The angel will move them from one place to the next. See the angels don't travel like us. They're not bound by this three dimension. They travel through what you call ports or gates within the earth. So like they grab Lot and his wife and their family and move them, you have two people working, one taken, and that person going to wake up or look up and they're going to be amongst other people in the wilderness. According to Ezekiel the 20th chapter. Read on. Two men shall be, shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Okay, and we proved that that's talking about the wilderness. 
Still, this is not talking about some church being raptured. All right? Now, let's get into the Antichrist now. Because what they tell you is, okay, there's this man that must come. After the church is hidden somewhere in heaven, there's this man that's going to come on the earth. That's going to have full rule on the earth. And this man will be called the Antichrist. You churchgoers, you don't have to worry about this guy. Because you're somewhere protected in heaven with Jesus Christ. Alright? First of all, suppose you find that there is no one Antichrist. And why would they push the spirit of one Antichrist? Why, why would they push it if they know, according to the Bible, there's more than one Antichrist? We'll show you. But first, we'll go through the scriptures, go through the scriptures they use to say that we're looking for one guy to pop up. Okay? And we're going to show you how all this ties in. There's an agenda when it comes to this rapture and dispensation teaching. There's an agenda. They're playing on the minds of the people for a purpose to accept something that's coming. Okay? And we're going to show you. Let's go to Revelation 16 and 13. Okay? Revelations 16 and 13. Right? Before you go, th go there, I want to get, to get one other scripture. Get Revelations 5 and 10. Read that. Revelations 5 and 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Where will we, will we, we reign? And we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. That's key there. So when Christ come down to get these crowns and set up dominion, it's for, it's for his followers to reign on earth. So he's going to come and, 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 and he's going to come and bring forth a temporary trip and then go back somewhere. That's nowhere in the scriptures. He's coming to set dominion for those that follow him. He's not going to go and then come, go, leave, and then come back again. No way in the Bible would show a third coming. Think about that. When he come back, that means he's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. What do you need to come back again for? Read. He shall what? Read it again. And, and Revelations 5 and 10. And he made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. We shall reign on the earth. See, and by us thinking that as Christians that we will be raptured into heaven, that gives you a complacent spirit. You're complacent. You figure there's nothing you need to do because you are protected because God would never let the Christians go through this pain of tribulation. Right? That's what you're thinking. I'm saved. It doesn't matter what, what goes on in prophecy. That's what they want you to think. That's the mindset you have is what they want you to think. They don't want you to think this. St. John 15 and 18. I want you to hold revelations because we're going back. Because we're going to deal with the psychological impact that these teachings have on, on the people. To put you in a complacent and docile Spirit. St. John 15 and 18. Read that. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So if you're following Christ, the world going to hate you. So if you are a Christian, you have to know that the world is going to hate you. Because they hated Christ. Now if everyone loving you, you need to examine that. Because those that are following Christ would be hated. That's a key there. Read if you were of the world, the world would love his own. If you were of the world and operated in the mindset of the world, the world would love you. Read. 
Because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So if you're really rolling with Christ or a true Christian, is everyone hating you? Are you saying something that, that's against the society you live in? Read. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. So if you are a Christian, you are a servant. You're not greater than our Lord Christ. Read. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. That's a sign right there. That if you are, if you are down with Christ, you are going to go through persecution. So if someone comes with a doctrine to tell you that you're going to escape persecution and get floated up in a cloud before an antichrist comes, you have to really examine that. Read. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Read. But all these things will they do unto you for my name, for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. You're going to find out that those that are teaching this doctrine don't even know the Father. They're not even close. Persecution and Jacob's trouble is a necessity for those that would make it into the kingdom. How can you get the reward of Christ and not go through the persecution of Christ and denying of this world like Christ? Think about that. So they're putting you in a complacent spirit. A really a, a mind controlled spirit. To do what? We're going to show you. But before that, let's get back to the Antichrist. What scriptures they use to say that there's an Antichrist going to come on the scene and you don't have to worry about nothing until, because th this is the big sign that everyone is waiting for. Who's the Antichrist? Who's the Antichrist? We've been hearing about this so-called Antichrist for over two decades. I've seen people uh, on the internet or through history have wrote books on who they think the Antichrist was. Since I was a kid. Even up until now, people are still waiting for this one guy. That's the whole thing. They want you thinking that someone needs to come. The question is, suppose the Antichrist was always here. Suppose he was here even during Paul's time. Suppose so. Then you will know that you're waiting for nothing. We're going to prove it. And it's going to totally destroy the understanding of waiting on an Antichrist. Let's go to Revelations, okay, 16 and 13, and you're going to read that, brother, down to 14. 16, 13, and 14. Read that, please. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. What they tell you? That false prophet is the Antichrist. No, we're going to show you. It is a spirit of Antichrist, but they ain't, this, ain't, this is not talking about one Antichrist. We're going to show you. And when it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast. Three. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. What are these? These are the lies that came. The lies or a doctrine that would come, that would deceive the people. And it says frogs because there's many would come out. Many. And I want you to examine this. Christ says, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive what? Many. I want you to, to examine the Christian doctrine itself. How many factions of Christianity or Christians do we have in this earth today? It's like many frogs. Many. Many. Everyone's saying that Christ is one, but you got Protestants, Baptists, Holy Rollers, you have uh you have uh, uh Jehovah Witnesses, you have Seven Day Adventists, you have Protestants, you have the, the list go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. You're gonna find out that false prophet. We're gonna show you who he is. You don't have to wait for the Antichrist no more, because we're gonna show you. It links directly to Daniel 7 and 25. Let's get Daniel 7 and 25. I need you to go back to, to whole Revelation. Don't, don't let that go, alright? Read. 
And he shall speak great words against the Most High. He shall speak great words against the Most High. They said it's the Antichrist. Nah. This he is a society. This he is a doctrine. This he started with the Holy Roman Church. Read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. That's how you can equate it to the Holy Roman Church. Who persecuted the Israelites or the Jews or the, or the Christians that follow Christ? The Romans. They wore out the saints of the Most High. They wore the saints out. Anyone that, any, any, any of those that belong to the children of Israel were thrown in the arenas. How do we know the saints are the children of Israel? Hold that and get Psalm the 50th chapter. Psalm the 50th chapter. Let's get it. Psalms 50. Read. Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That's the key. Just because you're following or in a, in a religion doesn't mean you are a saint. The Lord says, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What people sacrifice to the God of Israel in this Bible? Yes, the children of Israel. They are the saints. Go back to Psalms. Go back to uh, Daniel 7 and 25. You shall speak great words against the Most High. What are the great words? Under Constantine or the Holy Roman Church. Before it was the Holy Roman Church, Constantine in 321 set out to orchestrate a new religion in the earth. To integrate pagan belief because Constantine was a straight pagan. Straight demonic worshiper. So for political reasons, he integrated pagan beliefs with Christianity. What are the great words? Changing the laws of God. Instead of people worshiping on the Sabbath day, which the Bible commands us to, it's in the Bible. Exodus the 20th chapter. Huh? They tell you do what? You can, you're supposed to worship on the Sunday. Why? Because the pagans worship the sun. S-U-N. So that he is talking about the leadership structure that was starting with Constantine. Okay? It was brewing in Holy Rome before Constantine. But Constantine set out to do the will of Satan and bring forth his understanding, Satan's understanding, within the church. Read. And think to change and think to change times and laws. And think to change times and laws. Times and laws. Think about this. Times, laws. Now now through Holy Rome, people are doing what? Celebrating Christmas, celebrating Easter, bringing in new laws that the Bible says you're not supposed to deal with. Through this church, you can break God's law on purpose. You can eat anything you want. You can do, do anything you want. Through this new Western world teaching that came starting with Constantine. They'll tell you that all the laws are done away with. But yet, they will keep the law of tithing. Which was in the law of Moses. So they, they, they became the authority of what laws people should follow. This happened in 325. It was, it, it became a reality in 325 under the Council of Nicaea. That's when Satan got in, got got himself in the church. How do we know that? How do we know that this antichrist spirit was brewing well before our time that we're in today? Let's go to Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, to prove that. 2 Thessalonians, whole Revelations. You got Revelation 16? Okay, thank you, brother. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Let me get it with you here. The second chapter. You have that? Okay. Okay. Um, make sure I have it. Yeah. Okay, I have it here. 
And let's go back to Revelations. 16. Mm -hmm. Right? Read the next verse. 16 and 14. For they are the spirits of devils. They are the spirit of what? For they are the spirits of devils. For they are the spirits of devils. It was the spirit of devils that got in, into our doctrine. Read. Working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth. They go to through what? That go forth unto the kings of the earth. Question. What church carried their doctrine throughout the whole empire and set up kings? And governments. The Roman Catholic Church. Alright. They took with them. Doctrines of devils. The same pagan worship that came from Constantine. Go ahead. And of the whole world. To gather them to the battle of that great day of the Most High Almighty. So what they're doing. They're, they're actually subduing the earth with the satanic religion. That's preparing the people to fight against Christ himself. So if, if, if their agenda is to fight against Christ, how can they teach you of Christ? You see that? So they had to teach this deception to make people agree with their fighting against the Most High. They had to push this doctrine. They have missionaries. Everywhere they go and take down through war, they bring what? Catholic church, churches. Churches spring up everywhere they have war. Hospitals and churches. Catholic churches. And what comes with it? Doctrines of devils. Many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. Now let's see the spirit of Antichrist. Was it here during Paul's time? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Let's read it. Start at the first verse. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. We're going to read this all the way down to the 13th verse, all right? That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the, as the day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ is at hand. So he's telling us, the Lord is telling us, Paul was writing also. That we are not to be shaken by the things we see. Read. Let no man deceive you by any means. Say it again. Let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means. Including J.N. Darby. And the people that are coming up with these new philosophies. Read. For that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first. So the Lord says that day shall not come. Well Paul said that day shall not come. Unless there be a falling away first. What falling away? God's people had to fall. That happened in 70 AD. Under the Roman Empire. Vespasian and his son Titus. When they took down Israel in 70 AD. So he told them, don't be alarmed. Israel must fall first. How did they fall? Hold that and get Luke. Let's see if that falling away happened already. Hold that and get Luke 21 and 20. Don't, 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 uh, don't, don't, yeah, don't let go of your place there, please. Did that falling away happen yet? Yeah, let's see. Let's get <coughs> Luke 21 and 20, read. And when you shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies. Then what armies? The Roman armies, read. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then know that the desolation thereof <clears throat> is near. So Paul was one of them and saying, listen, don't get alarmed. Because... Christ is not going to come back until first that falling away happened of our people. So what happened in 70 AD? The Roman armies took down Israel's last empire or last stronghold. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Then let they which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Go two verses down from there. Go ahead. <laughs> but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But there should be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. They, the saints were being destroyed by the Romans. Christ told us about this. See, Paul understood about this prophecy that needed to take place. Read. 
and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The children of Israel and the children of Judah fell by the sword. This was the real Holocaust. Read. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And shall be what? And shall be led away captive into all nations. So the real people of God will be led away captive into all nations. Like the slaves that were bought here in America. Yes. Now let's go back to the falling away in Thessalonians. Read that part again. That that day shall not come. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. We fell away in 70 A.D. Read. And that, and that man of sin be revealed. That man of sin, whom they are teaching is the Antichrist, but let's see. Read. The son of perdition. The son of perdition. Who's the son of perdition? Satan. He has to be revealed, and whom he's working through must be revealed. You're going to find out that the doctrine you're learning... Is who we're revealing. We're revealing that spirit of Antichrist. The doctrine we're learning in the Western world today. Read. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Who exalteth and, and do what? Who opposeth who and opposeth, exalteth. That means he make new laws to oppose God's laws. And do what? Above all that is called God. And he sit on people. He's over the people. He's bringing politics to the people. He's bringing doctrine to the people. Read. Or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. He sit in the temple of God. Read. Showing himself that he is God. What man on earth is walking around <coughs> as God on earth right now? Pope. The, um, who? Pope. The Pope. The Pope. Being called Father when Christ has called no man Father upon earth. So he was revealed. You're going to find out that that pope or all the popes that, that you see, even though they're different men, they all are bearers of the same spirit. There's a ritual, a, a seven day ritual that happens that will allow the spirit from one pope. Once that pope die, the same spirit goes into the, the next pope. They're the same guy. The same God go from one pope to the next, even from the time of Constantine. Constantine had the spirit of Antichrist in him. And they did the same ritual all the way till today. It's the same spirit. So we don't have to wait for the false prophet because his doctrine that came from the Holy Roman Church, the mother of harlots, proves that the false prophet is the leader of their political structure. Of their church structure. Read. Remember yet not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. That he will be revealed in his time. Read. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Read that again. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So Paul says, while you're waiting on an antichrist... The mystery of iniquity doeth already work. The spirit of Antichrist was there during Paul's time. He was telling you that that spirit was there. It just have to move from one man to the next. It just, it, it have to move from one man to the next. But the spirit was there during, during Paul's time. The Caesars had the spirit. The spirit of Antichrist. Read. Only he who, who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So the Most High let Satan reign amongst Rome until Christ come and take away his power. Read. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So when Christ come, he's going to destroy that false prophet himself. That spirit that's in the popes. That's a ritual they do. Where you see the black smoke for a few days, and then you see the white smoke. That's straight sorcery. That's channeling and moving one spirit from one body to the next. So while you are programmed to wait on an Antichrist, the, the spirit of Antichrist is already controlling you. Through your doctrine. Through your politics. Read. Read. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So Christ's going to destroy that spirit when he comes. Read. 
Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. After the working of Satan. Go ahead. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And signs and lying wonders. And don't tell me you, can, you don't know the, the power of the Holy Roman Church. Let me tell you. They have power. If you don't believe me, look on this earth and see how many empires were taken down by them. They have power. Okay? The Pope is a spiritual leader of the Western world. He's behind these missiles and all these things you see. He's behind the full instruction of what's going on with the New World Order. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. So since you don't want to receive the love of the truth, read. Because they receive not the love of the truth. So because people want to follow man, and do what they want to do and follow the evil they're being taught in these churches. Read. That they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. Because you don't want to open up the Bible and find the truth. The Lord says he's going to send you a strong delusion. Read. That they should believe a lie. That they shall believe what? That they should believe a lie. Left behind. The rapture. So because you don't want to go into the Bible and find yourself and find the truth according to the Most High, and because you want a doctrine that excuses your evil, the Lord says he will send you a strong delusion that you may believe a lie. And based on what Christ says, and what Christ told us in Matthew the 24th chapter, that lie will come to those professing that they are Christ. Read on. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. See that? Many shall come in his name. See, that's why the Lord says that the way to his kingdom is straight and narrow, narrow and only a few go therein. But broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So you, you might look at the numbers you see in the church and think that that's where the Holy Spirit is because you see these thousands of people. They're delusional. That's why they're there. They're under a spell of the Antichrist. While they're waiting on the Antichrist, the Antichrist already have their mind. Read on. That they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have pleasure in unrighteousness. Why? If you're a Christian, you can stay wicked. Because they'll tell you through grace, you don't have to change nothing. I can eat what I want. I can do what I want, but what God rule without law? But in the churches, you can be evil and wicked and stay that way, and you can just say, listen, the Lord know my heart. Or you can be wicked your whole life, and then at the, your last breath say, I accept the Lord as my Savior, and you will be reigning with Christ without any past sacrifice. That's what they're teaching Spirit of Antichrist. Read on. What verse you at? Verse 13. Read it. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for, for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. <laughs> See, that's what's going to cleanse us. The belief of the truth. How, how do we know if we have the truth if we don't examine the doctrines that have been passed to us? We haven't been cleansed with the truth. We've been cleansed with the doctrine from the Western world. Now, we will now go into Revelation 13. Another scripture that they, uh, they use to say that an Antichrist may come first. An Antichrist must come that everyone must look for in prophecy today. Let's go to Revelation 13. And they say during this period, the church will already be raptured into heaven. And I'm glad we made it clear that that rapture into heaven does not even exist. Let's go to Revelation 13. Right? And we're going to start at about the ninth verse. Revelation 13 and 9, if you can follow us here. Are y'all following us? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Let's get Revelation 13 and let's start at the ninth verse. Yeah, start at 9. 
If any man have an ear, let him hear. If you have your spiritual ears open, listen. Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that put people into captivity, eventually the same will happen to those that have placed people into captivity. Read. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So if you kill somebody with the sword or destruction, eventually you reap what you sow. Go ahead. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That's what the saints are waiting for. The saints are waiting, you know, for Christ to set them back up and, and turn the tide. Read. And, and I beheld another beast coming, coming up out of the earth. When it says beast, it's not talking about uh, a man. It's talking about an empire. Okay? So they use these scriptures to say, hold up, man. It's talking about the beast, which is the Antichrist. No, it's talking about empire. We're going to prove it. Read. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. That means he's coming in a soft-spoken way. For this empire comes like they would not harm anyone. But what's coming out of their mouth is those frogs or those lies that we, that we, uh, we were uh, talking about earlier from the Roman Catholic Church. Satan, the spirit of Satan would come out of them. Read. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. All the powers of the first beast before him. So this new beast would exercise the beast of Holy Rome, of the Babylonian Empire. You're going to find out this beast, this beast is being executed through America today. This is Holy Rome again. Read. And called up the earth and then was well therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So, this country, through the way it takes people down and destroy people, it makes everyone worship who? The Holy Roman Catholic Church. Each place it go to conquer, it sets up a church. That th These beasts and revelations are empires, not one man. Read. And he doth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So in the left behind tapes, they talking about a man coming and fire going to come out of his mouth. He's not talking about that. These are great miracles you see today when you see the wars in Iraq and the wars in these different countries. And America shows, and Great Britain and all these other countries show their, nu their nuclear capability, their missiles and weaponry. That's making great fire come down from heaven. That's a miracle compared to the time that John was on this earth. There was no technology where a missile can go from one country to the next. It's talking about an empire that would have the miracles of weaponry. So while you're waiting on, while, while we're taught to wait on a man, that's fire going to be coming out of his mouth. That empire have already executed these miracles. Read. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound, which had the wound by a sword and did live. That image is a lifestyle that the Western world and America portrays to the people. It's a lifestyle. It's an image that they give us. That we must follow this image, and if we don't follow under the image that Satan gives us, he have no use for us. And he execute this through democracy all over the earth. Read. And he had powers give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So if we don't worship this image, this dream, this philosophy, this understanding that comes from the Western world, they have no use for you. So what they're doing for those that may oppose the new world order, and the powers of the Roman Catholic Church, they have concentration camps and death waiting for you. Read. And he called them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Right hand or in their foreheads. Receive as a badge of servitude. You have the RFID chip coming now. You have, you have the Vera chip coming. You have MiCAD coming. You have Chad coming where your children can be shot with an implant from birth. And with it, all your identification is in it. Now, did you see an antichrist pop up on the scene and say, and say you better get these things? No. But through the fear of terrorism, George Bush and all the Western worlds and societies are now pushing 
an antichrist society. So now we understand the reason they're pushing propaganda with left behind, the rapture doctrine. Why? Because if I think that an antichrist must come and I will be raptured into heaven, any source of spending, whether it be the chip or identification, I will glad I, I will gladly receive because according to what I believe, if I'm not raptured, the mark of the beast has not been revealed yet. And through that, your pastors will tell you, listen, the church has not been raptured yet. So follow your government and get everything they tell you to get. Because according to the Bible, unless you're raptured, the mark of the beast has not been revealed. Because we don't know who the Antichrist is. So it was a propaganda to get the masses prepared to receive this electronic spending that will be instituted in the near future. And Christians are going to eat it up. They're going to get it because propaganda has been pushed on them. And because this happened, happened. Who's that? That's mine. Because this haven't happened yet, they will receive it. They will receive the chips and the electronic spending with no problem. Read. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. You see that? You will not be able to buy or sell unless you have this mark. What's this mark? This mark is the chip that's being instituted through the government of the Western world. Read. Or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. It's a number of a man. To let you know that spirit would come through a man. And it started with who? It started way back, during Paul's time, the spirit of Antichrist that came through the Pope, that came through Holy Rome, that is here today in the Western world, pushing everyone to follow an image in this earth. So they had to push a concentrated propaganda to make everyone accept the spending system that they have today. And they have, a, they have placed certain pastors and teachers they have tact tactically put them in place within the last 15 years have pushed a prosperity doctrine so that people will get used to thinking that it's okay to be paid. I'm supposed to have money. I'm supposed to have riches. So when this new electronic system is instituted, they can move you right into it and say, listen, God don't want you to be poor. God don't want your children to suffer. God wants you to be happy and feed yourself. You're supposed to be prosperous. So they left, they went from the left behind doctrine. They pushed that and got that into people's minds first. Then they put up prosperity teachers to get people prepared to take the mark of the beast. Now they're preparing preachers to do what? To quell public sentiments in case there's martial law. They're using the pastors to destroy the people. More. Let's go into the real left behind. According to the Bible. And see what's going to happen to those that are left behind. Will Christians. Go through tribulation here in the earth. Will they? Or will they be. Uh, 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 shipped up into heaven. In this bubble somewhere. Let's see. Let's go to Revelation the 20th chapter. Revelations 20. You got it? You have that? Okay. Let's start at the first verse. Mm -hmm. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, 
and bound him a thousand years. And bound him a thousand years, letting you know when Christ comes back, he's going to bound Satan. So he's not going to come to float people up into heaven. Read. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more. So this is key right here. Because we know when Christ comes back, he will seal the power of Satan. He will destroy Satan. He will take Satan and seal him for a specific amount of time. So if Satan is bound, how was the Antichrist on earth doing evil? Think about that. How would an Antichrist beheading people and doing all these things if the power of Satan is destroyed or held captive when Christ comes back? Read it. That he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. So we know that Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years. Read. And after that he must be loosed a little season. So Satan is not going to be loosed until after the thousand year dominion in, in the kingdom when Christ's people are set up. Read. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Go ahead. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Hold up. How are they beheaded for the witness of Jesus? If they were floated up in a cloud somewhere. The disciples had to go through suffering and persecution. Go ahead. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Worship the what? Which had not worshipped the beast. These are those that are here that will reject the image of the beast. Go ahead. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. Go ahead. Or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So those that reject the mark that are following Christ will get dominion when Christ comes. So how could they be there to reject the mark if the doctrine of, of, of the left behind or rapture is true, that the believers have floated into heaven? They must be here to reject it. Read. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the first resurrection is when the dead in Christ rise and we are changed and those that are following Christ is changed. That's the first resurrection. Okay. That's when people shall be changed. But these are those that have rejected the mark of the beast. How can you reject the mark of the beast if the doctrine is telling you in Christianity today that Christians don't have to worry about the mark of the beast because the Antichrist ain't, it haven't come yet. And that, don't worry. No pain. Christ don't want you to go through pain. He's going to float you into heaven. That's deceive. That's deception. Okay? If you are following Christ, you are going to go through this, the way he went through it. You're going to go through this persecution. You're going to see pain on this earth. And you will fight against all evil, even if it means your life. Alright? Let's go into what really left behind is. Let's go into what the left behind is according to the Bible. Right? Let's go to second entrance out of the Apocrypha. The 13th chapter. 2nd Andrews 13 and we're going to start at the 12th verse. Ready? I'm going to read this all the way down, right? To 26, but let's start at the, let's, let's go with it. Afterward, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. That same one that came down, this is Jesus Christ, the second coming. Yes, he's written of in the Apocrypha. Read. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awakened and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and has counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Show me now yet the interpretation of this dream. Go ahead. For as I conceive in my understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days. It says, woe to them that shall be left in those days. This is talking about the end of the tribulation. The tribulation that started ever since Christ was crucified. That means 
Woe to us that's, that are here now, that are trying to follow Christ. Go ahead. And much more woe unto them that are not left behind. That are what? And, and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. And there's more woe to them that are not left behind. What does that mean? We're going to show you. Read. For they that were not left were heaviness, were in heaviness. For now understand I the things that are the things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. Now this is the teaching for those that are left behind. Read. Therefore are are they come into great perils. They will come into great perils. That means destruction will come on them. These are believers now. Go ahead. And many necessities like as these dreams declare. So their needs will dry up. They're following Christ. They're trying to do the best they can. And their necessities would dry up at the very end. Do that sound familiar? <laughs> that sounds like it's happening now, right? Read. Yet it is easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world. And not to see the things that happen in the last days. And he answered unto me and said, The interpretation of the vision shall I show thee, and I will open unto thee the thing that thou hast required. He says, I'm going to show you the full understanding of this breakdown, or this understanding, or this interpretation of left behind. Read. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind. This is, the, this is the interpretation. This is the real interpretation of left behind. So you don't have to, you don't have to buy this thing and waste your money and let the actor Kirk Cameron show you what left behind is. Okay, this is Hollywood. This is the Bible. So if you want to know what left behind is, it tell you that. Read that verse again. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. Here's a real interpretation of left behind. Go ahead. He that shall endure the peril in that time have kept himself. If you have endured the peril or the pain that came on you, so how can you get this pain if you up in heaven? Read. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. So if you have works and faith towards the Almighty, you're going to fall into danger. Why? Because you are a threat to this satanic world. You are. <clears throat> Here's the true understanding. You don't have to go to Kirk Cameron or these people that have no authority in teaching the Bible on what is left behind. We're going to read the truth on what the true doctrine of left behind. Read the 23rd verse for me again. He that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. So first of all, he that shall endure the peril in the time that he kept himself. So the true teachers of the Most High, the true leaders, will have to go through, will, will need to go through perils first. Read. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. So those that have works and faith towards the Almighty will do what? Fall in dangers. To let you know, those that follow Christ, they're here to take down Satan's world. Satan knows it, so he will try to take them out. How can he do that if the church been raptured into heaven? And how can we do our work to take down Satan's powers in this earth if we're floated into heaven? No, we have to go through dangers. Read. Know this therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. Read that again. Know this therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. They that are left behind is better than those that be dead. So those that are here, we're going to see the day of the coming of our Lord and fight through dangers. Okay? So them telling you that you're going to be floated somewhere... While the Antichrist is here, no. If you belong to Christ, you have a job to do. And Satan understands it, and he will try to stop you. Read. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. Jesus Christ, read. The same is he whom God, the highest, have kept the great season, which by his own shall, shall deliver his creature. So through Christ, his creation will be delivered. Read. 
And he shall order them that are left behind. He will do what? And he shall order them that are left behind. Christ will guide us that's here. Christ is going to guide us that's left behind here to fight his cause in this earth. What work can I do if I done floated into heaven somewhere? I have to be here to help our people go through Jacob's trouble. Read. And that he held, excuse me, and whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that he, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. This is the interpretation. Read on. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Hold up, they floated up in the sky. Behold, the days come when the Most High will deliver them that are upon the earth. That are upon the earth. Read. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. Sounds like what's going on now, right? We're in tribulation. Right now. So you don't have to worry about a seven year period of tribulation that's not even written of in the Bible. We're in tribulation. All these wars that the Bible is speaking of is happening. Read. And the time should be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen, when I, which I showed thee before, and then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. Go ahead. And when all the people hear his voice, Every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have won against another, and innumerable multitudes shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. So when Christ comes back, all the nations are going to join together to try to fight against him. Yes, the Europeans, Chinese, Japanese, the Hermetic nations, even the Arabs, even though right now they are against each other. But they have a common enemy. Christ coming back to subdue the earth to give power back to his people. And guess what? These people are being changed. Not, not to be floated into heaven. They're being changed to become part of Christ's army and subdue the earth. And the Lord needs to change their bodies so that they can fight and take all the weapons from you nations. That's why their bodies will be changed from mortal to immortal. Want us to prove that? Let's go, Joel, the second chapter. You think the Lord is going to change their bodies so that they can be hid somewhere in heaven? No. They're coming to earth. Those that are following Christ that will be changed will be on this earth, subduing the earth. Taking down the earth. How do we know that? Let's go to Joel 2. And let's start at the first verse. Lo ye the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Go ahead. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand. The day of the Lord. Talking about the coming of Christ. Go ahead. A day of darkness. And of gloominess. A day of what? A day of darkness and a day of gloominess. So uh, anybody that's waiting for someone to come down and skip through some 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 pastures and, and think that Christ's going to come and say, I want to love all of you. The day of, let me tell you, the day of the Lord is total darkness. He's not coming here for peace. Read. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. Go ahead. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, and a strong, there have not been ever the light, neither shall any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burner. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolation wilderness, a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. Nothing shall escape those that Christ will set up in this earth. That will be changed to immortal. We'll show you. Read. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains. Shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire. That devour up the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. 
Set in what? Set in battle array. So those that are changed are coming back for battle with Christ. They're coming back to battle. Read. Before their faces the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. Like what? Like mighty men. Go ahead. They shall climb the wall of men, like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his way. And they shall not break their ranks. So when they are changed to these immortal bodies... They will not break their ranks. They're here to take down George Bush. They're here to take down uh, 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 the powers of Russia, the powers of Persia, the Queen of England. All their faces will be turned to blackness, including the Pope, who the Lord will destroy with the brightness of his coming. Read. Neither shall one thrust, thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when, they, and when they fall upon the sword, they should not be wounded. You see that? These bodies are going to be so great that even if you try to shoot these bodies, try to stab these bodies, no weapon formed shall prosper. They shall, they, they shall fall on a sword. It won't even wound them. That's an immortal body. That's a great army that's coming to take down this army, the armies of this earth. Read. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Before his what? Before his army. The Lord is coming with an army. He's not coming to folk the church up into heaven. When you're changed, you will become a part of his ranks. To take down the earth. Read. For his camp is very great. For he is strong to execute of his word. For the day of the Lord the is of great. The what? For the day of the Lord is great. For the day of the Lord, man. Read. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Who can abide in this day? Who can abide in this day? Just imagine this total darkness. The Lord is coming to bring pain on this earth for all the evil teachings, for all the things that have been executed against him in this earth by the Roman Catholic Church, by the churches that sprung up after the mother of harlots who have taught different doctrines of men and have taken people away from the true doctrine of this Bible. So I don't know what you're waiting for. They're teaching you about this fictitious Christ that's going to come and have all nations float into heaven together. That's nowhere in the Bible. Read that verse again. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Chap so, give me the chapter and verse. Joel 2 verse 11. Go ahead. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Before his what? Before his army. Before his army. So when you change, you will become a part of his army. That links up to 1 Corinthians. The 15th chapter. 2 Thessalonians, you understand, in Thessalonians 4, which says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain shall be changed. They're being changed into immortal bodies to come back and subdue the earth under Christ. What verse are you at? Verse 11. Go ahead. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Is what? And very terrible. The day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Read. And who can abide it? Who can abide it? That means who can stand in the day of the Lord. So if he's coming down to float down and to take you up in, into heaven, how is that a very dark day? Read. Therefore also now said the Lord, turn you even to me with all your heart. Now we must turn to the Lord with all his, all your heart. Read. And with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. You see that? With fasting, weeping, and mourning. That's what time it is, man. We're going to go through pain here, man. Read. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. So it's time for us to rend our hearts. Change our hearts and turn to the Father because we're at the very end of tribulation. The Antichrist spirit 
is after God's people. And soon through the new world order, many will die. Read. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Get Zechariah 9 and 13. More on the changed bodies. More on the changed bodies and their position in Christ's army when he returns. This is the real left behind now. Read Zechariah 9 and 13 for me, please. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. Read that again. When I have bent Judah for me, Fill the bow with Ephraim. So Judah and Ephraim, Israel will become a, a power again in the earth. No more will they be scattered when they're changed. Read. And raise up and raise up thy sons, O Zion, against the sons, O Greece. You see that? He's going to raise up the sons of Zion again against the sons, O Greece, or the powers that are ruling this earth today. All the powers, or the European or Western world powers were originated or started their power through Greeks or the Greeks, Alexander the Greek. Read. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. Shall do what? Shall defend them. It's going to be a fight. A fight when he come back, man. He's not coming to float nobody in the heaven, man. Read. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as 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 through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls as the corners of the altar. Imagine that. Strong. Strong. Now I want you to imagine something here. In order for the earth to have peace, first war must come. So when Christ come back. He must do what? Change those that was with him to subdue the earth. And then after the seven year roundup and the seven year subduing of all the weapons, then there should be a thousand years of peace. How do we know that? Let's get Ezekiel 39. Before you get Ezekiel 39, let's get Zechariah 10. Zechariah 10, in the third verse. Read that. My anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts had visited his flock, the house of Judah. The house of who? The house of Judah. The church. The house of Judah. He visited the house of Judah. Judah are people. Read. And had made them as his goodly horse in the battle. In the what? In the battle. So he's going to raise Judah and the Israelites again that have been scattered into these captive lands. And use them in the battle at the very end. Those that follow Christ and keep the commandments. Read. Out of him came forth the corner. Out of him the nail. Out of him the battle bow. Out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men. Was tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. Hold up. They're going to be trodden down the other nations in the, in the mire of the streets in, in the battle. They're going to be in the streets subduing the whole earth again under Christ. So Christ is coming down here for war. Read. And they shall fight. Because the Lord is with them. He's in heaven. He slaughtered us in heaven. He's and, they, and they shall fight because the Lord is with them. They shall fight because the Lord is with them. This is what's going to happen when Christ comes back. Now, I wonder why they don't show this on the left behind tapes. Why? Why? Because this is propaganda. This is propaganda to deceive the masses on the truth of Christ against the truth of Christ rather read and they and they shall fight because the Lord is with them and the riders on the horses shall be confounded the riders on the horses are all the empires that are sitting lofty in these high seats riding over the other people sitting on the other people the Lord will take their crowns 
he will use those that he changed to take those crowns. To prove that, let's go to Ezekiel, the 39th chapter. Ezekiel 39. You with me? <clears throat> I'm going to start at the 8th verse. Behold, go ahead. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. This is the day wherein I have spoken. This is the coming of our Lord. Let's see, is he going to float people into heaven when he come? Let's see. Now we know that people will, he, uh, the dead in Christ shall rise and be with them in the air. But they're coming to the earth. They're coming to the earth. To subdue the earth. You have your George Bushes, your Russian, Chinese, everyone have nuclear capability and weapons of war right now. So in order for there to be peace, what must happen? Their weapons must be subdued. Christ must take away all their weaponry. So who will he use? Let's see. And, and they that dwell in the cities of Israel <coughs> shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. Shall do what? Shall, shall go forth and set on fire and burn the weapons. So those that are changed will be used in ranks to go from nation to nation, taking down the countries, taking their weapons. Both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. So we're going to go for seven years burning all the weaponry of the world. So this got to happen before peace comes. How can you have peace when you have uh, uh, empires and kingdoms with weapons? Read. So that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any of the forest. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them. Spoil those, rob those that rob them, go ahead. And rob those that rob them. So, the, so those that have robbed the whole earth and destroyed God's people, God's people are going to take back everything that was stolen. That's what Christ is coming back here for, righteousness, equity, justice. Read. Saith the Lord God. Saith who? Saith the Lord God. Now tell us the Bible is lying. God said that those that rob will be robbed. Christ is coming back to do this. See, if we have these regular bodies, there's no way we'll be able to be a part of this army and fight and take the weapons. So now, our mortal bodies have to become immortal, like Christ's. Our terrestrial must become celestial. It's coming all together for you now? Read on. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto God a place thereof, thereof graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury God and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Haman God. So all of them that fought against Christ, the land, is, the land will be stitched with them. So these nations, don't, they don't want to give up their empires. They're going to fight. The Chinese don't want to give up their empire. You know them. You know the Europeans don't want to give up their empire. They will fight. And they will lose. They will lose. Talking about the coming of the Lord. Read on. And seven months. Let's go to the 14th verse. And they shall sever out men of continual employment. So let me tell you. The other nations will have a continual job. Once their, their weapons are taken, the next thing is to do what? Set the whole earth in order. Now we have to give the nations their duty. What is their duty? Read. Passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth. So the nations that don't fight against us will be burying those that fight against Christ. That's what's going to happen. That's what's happening when he come back. Read. To cleanse it after the end of seven months shall they search. Go ahead. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamangad. So that's going to be the job of the nations. First the, first the weapons are being taken, then those that fought against Christ, you must get buried. 
See, in, under the law, it's unclean to touch a dead carcass. So the other nations will bury their own. And then after that, the seven years of roundup, after that, then there will be peace on earth for a thousand years. Okay? So now we understand the truth of the rapture, the truth of left behind, and we understand beyond any shadow of a doubt that that doctrine is incorrect. All right? Last but not least, St. John 8 and 32. St. John 8 and 32. Read that. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You should be free now. Because now, you know the truth. I'm going to ask you, brothers, because when you came in, <laughs> you had questions. Do y'all know the truth now? Yes. yes we do. do y'all have any questions? Not at all. Huh? Not at all. So y'all understand exactly what's going to happen when Christ comes? Yes. And what do you think about the teachings of the rapture and left behind? That they're teaching in the Christian church today. That you were saying. Huh? Completely false. As you were saying, everything added all up together as in one. But what they were saying is all confusion going on. So everything you're saying is, is coming together with the scriptures. It's coming back when, when Christ's time is coming back. But as you said, when the chip, it was an antichrist to come here, but the chip is already here. We don't see no beast here now. Though. Exactly. So in a nutshell, what's happening is they're deceiving the people. So that these people will, will willfully take on the mark of the Antichrist, thinking that they should have been raptured. And if they're not raptured, they can receive any form of spending power that's given by the government. Since they're not floated into heaven, if their pastors tell them, listen, you haven't been raptured yet and the Antichrist is not here yet, you can receive anything the government has given you. And through that, they will be slaughtered, destroyed. They're not going to understand that they've been lied to. They're not going to understand that until they're being escorted by their government to the concentration camps. So that leads us to the next topic. The next topic that you'll see and you'll learn.